we, the girls, will have our first girls' panel and will be presenting our recommendations tomorrow. On behalf of all girls, women, boys, men, and everyone, I thank the Royal Academy, the Governor Malta, the co-organizers, co-sponsors, and of course my ambassador, Mr. Andre Blanchard, for coming here to support me, and everyone here for supporting us and youth today. Now, I'd like to introduce someone very special, Mr. Nikhil Seth, who will chair and moderate for our next debate. He is the executive director of UNITAR. I'd like to thank him, and I'm sure everyone here thanks him for his leadership and work with support from other UN agencies for the Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you for believing in the SDGs. Thank you for your vision, and thank you so much for coming here today. Mr. Nikhil Seth. Thank you. Let's continue now with a very distinguished panel. And before we start the panel, let me thank Rasit and uh, Dr. Nisreen al Hashemite, and of course, uh, the Honorable Dr. Elena Dali for the excellent work they've been doing. I've been part of this process now for almost three years, and uh, I'm really amazed at the progress that we've made in the work that's being done here. Many of you raise the question of awareness, and it's remarkable how this whole project on awareness raising has moved forward. Pro awareness raising is the start of attitudinal and behavioral change, and the fact that Rasit and Princess Nasreen have committed so much in raising this awareness, and the fact that we are where we are today after three years is remarkable. But it's not only awareness, it's also looking at things which will make a difference. It's also looking at solutions by trying to capture them in outcomes, by saying this is what we are going to do through advocacy, through the media, through reaching out to educational institutions, through promoting what we need to do to encourage the participation of girls and women in STEM, I think uh, Rasit and the effort that this process has garnered over these three years needs to be applauded and complimented. So congratulations for where you've reached and what you hope to do in the coming years. By being introduced, people referred to Agenda 2030. I'm very proud of what we managed to do two years ago to get 170 presidents and prime ministers to sign off on that agenda, which is a plan for humankind. It's a plan for getting to the world we want by 2030. Every part of that agenda, from poverty eradication, to environmental issues, to social issues, to issues of sustainable infrastructure, of cities, science, technology, and innovation, offer great hope for finding the solutions to meet the goals and targets in that agenda. But think of the human capacity that's needed to put more shoulders together to make advances on that. And one clear win is to engage more systematically women and girls in this, in imbuing the solutions for Agenda 2030 with their participation, especially through science, technology, innovation, and what are called the STEM subjects. So clearly, just in terms of numbers, if one was to look at how we're going to achieve Agenda 2030, the real capacity gap has to be met by women coming to the front in supporting the implementation of this agenda. I have lots of statistics here, statistics which point to the lack of success in many countries, especially I was surprised to see in the developed countries, and statistics to support what's happening in this area in the developing countries, which looks much more encouraging than what's been happening in large parts of the developed world. In the US, for example, there's been a decline in the last 30 years of the participation of women in STEM disciplines. And the opportunities now are greater than ever before, but somehow the numbers seem to be falling. In the developing world, the picture is much rosier, 
and the engagement of women is much more dynamic. On activities that we need to take with the media, on this advocacy side, on this awareness side, ways to start behavioral and attitudinal shifts which will make a difference to the world, things are happening. And I'm so glad we have so many speakers today who are going to talk about the reasons why, how we should raise awareness, how we should advocate more on the subject, and also come up with concrete ideas for solutions to make this world more equal, especially in the subject we are dealing with today. But it's not all gloom and doom. And I just wanted to relate two of my very personal experiences, which points to a nicer trajectory which is in front of us. I had gone to my country, India, and I talked to students in a poor school, a grade 10. It was a class of about 40 people, equally balanced between girls and boys. I had a conversation with each one of them. Most of the girls, I think almost all of them, wanted to either go into astrophysics or become neurosurgeons or go into medicine, while all the boys, roughly half that class, wanted to become chartered accountants or go into business. So the trend, at least as I saw in that poor school, was very different in the attitudes that the girls had there and the boys who were now entering the year when they were taking their exams to get into colleges. Then yesterday, my granddaughter, who's all of three years and a bit, came back from her preschool with two contraptions in her hand. One was a battery-powered robot. It didn't look like anything, but it, she said it was a battery-powered robot that she'd made in her school, and it actually worked. She pushed a switch, and there was a whirring sound, and it moved forward. And the other was a blender, a blender she had made with, of course, cardboard blades. But when she switched it on, it seemed to work. And the pleasure and thrill of that kind of discovery that you can make things happen that really endeared myself, that in preschools, if people in New York City, girls and boys are finding the wonders of doing things by themselves in these fields, it portends wonderful things ahead. So I just wanted to share that. I didn't want to talk about all the statistics I have collected, all the studies I have collated, all the solutions I had put together. I'll distribute that because we are very time constrained and we have about 18 to 20 people want to say something on this subject. So let me end my opening salvo there and turn now to the distinguished panel that we have. And in turning to the distinguished